like I said, I've said it before and I'll say it again, those that live life like a game, and those who think they have to do evil and take advantage of other people in order to get what they want in life, they're going to find out pretty darn quick that life isn't a game. When they begin to see the biblical scriptures unfold before their very eyes, they're going to be left rage quitting, they're going to be left hating themselves as well as persecuting themselves like I said I see things before they even happen and I know that there are people out there tapping their hands together high-fiving one another thinking they're winning What did you honestly think? That I didn't know what you're up to. You best believe, right? That my come up, which is about to happen, funnily enough, my come up is going to be each and every one of your downfall. And this is what you don't understand. You rub your hands together now, you uh, high five one another, you smirk amongst yourselves thinking you're actually winning, but you're not winning, because you're living outside of the old covenant and the new covenant, thus ultimately making you an enemy of God, you are abandoned, he has rejected you, lest you get right with him now, while you still have the chance people. Because the longer you leave it by living double-minded lives, by treating others like complete and utter shite. Like I said, to rub your hands and high-five one another and smirk amongst yourselves, you know, thinking you're actually doing the right things in life. The longer you leave rejecting God, right, the more he's going to reject each and every one of you. It is what it is. And ironically, it's you same people that always come crawling back, crying, begging and pleading for your golden ticket. No, not going to happen. Not going to happen. What did you honestly think was going to happen? I was going to get off my feet, and dance around, give you a show. No. All bridges are cut off, like I said. There's no getting back what you could potentially have had with me. I don't care who you are. Living like degenerates, for one. Living double-minded lives. High-fiving one another. Smug smirking amongst yourselves. Laughing, joking. These are all tell-tale signs of narcissistic personality disorder. I see through each and every one of you. You're not, you're not, you're not fooling me at all. You think you are, but you're not. I'm fooling each and every one of you with the gospel truth. I'm fooling each and every one of you with the gospel truth. There is absolutely nothing that you can say nor do to attempt to turn me into one of you. My days of living like a child are over. And this is what you clowns don't understand. If you want to live like children, then by all means you live like children, but you're not my children. You're children of the devil. Only children of the devil would actually portray these type of behaviours. Children of God, on the other hand, they wouldn't be portraying these behaviours. They would want the best for their fathers, their mothers, right? Of course they would. Which brings me to my next question. I can discern real children of God from the lost and damned degenerative 
reprobates living double-minded lives out there. You can't go around living a double-minded life fooling yourself into thinking that you're winning by trying everything within your worldly power to sabotage others and destroy their spiritual awakening or to make you feel, you know, yourselves feel good, you, you know, to give yourselves that pride and ego boost. You're sick. You don't even realise it, you're sick. You're absolutely sick. You're not even real humans, for one. Because real humans would not treat others like this. I'm telling you now, it's a well-known fact. They wouldn't. And the fact that you're treating others like this, like I said, makes you an abomination unto the Lord. He rejects you and abandons you. And that's what happens when you go around living double-minded lives. You laugh and joke and smug smirk amongst yourselves now while it all lasts, yeah. But don't come crawling back crying, begging and pleading like you always do for your golden ticket once it's all said and done, stripped away from you and you're actually hit with the hardcore truth. So hard as a matter of fact that it actually in fact humbles you. Knocks you down a few pegs. Because I'm telling you now, God never misses his targets. He never misses his targets. He is always on point. And to those of you that project on to be the voice of... Oh, I hope he knows that we're actually in fact on his side. You're not on my side. Because like I said, degenerates and reprobates... living double-minded lives out there are not on my side you never were and never have been let me tell you that much for free you never were and never have been now assuming of course you're following the gospel you're not arrogant within your own ways and you're applying the gospel to your life and you're seeking after the truth day in day out via the Holy Spirit, and you're not living a double-minded life, you're not living like a reprobate, a degenerate, then by all means. But like I said, people are going to, you know, they're going to see, and they're going to see pretty darn fast, that life isn't a game. Because those that treat life as though it's a game, right, they're not only wasting their own precious, valuable time, time that they could well, in fact, have used to better themselves, right? They are also wasting their precious valuable time and blocking what could potentially be their own blessings later on down the line for living like a degenerate, a reprobate. Like I said, people, you can't go around living a double-minded life. You just can't. No matter how much you fool yourselves into thinking you can't, you can't. Because there's no living a double-minded life and then expecting to seek fruits. Which is what we all want, right? We want fruits for our labour. Yeah? You're not going to find any of that. By choosing to live a double-minded life. Now, is it known for a person to backslide? Yes. Can a person backslide every single day of the week? No. And this is what people don't understand. You're being fooled by the devil. It's okay to backslide every once in a while, right? Assuming, of course, there's genuine repentance there. And you're trying everything, like I said, within your godly power to avoid any backslidden behaviours. He can use these said times for his greater good. But if it's every single day of the week, no. If you people are backsliding every single day, which I know a lot of you are, yeah. You're taking the piss. You're technically speaking, taking God's grace, right, and you're trampling it. As though it means nothing. 
and you're going to find out pretty darn fast that you can't go around taking the gift of grace, trampling it for your own sick gratification, yeah, only to laugh and joke and smug smirk amongst yourselves, thinking it actually, in fact, is laughable. Because God is going to show you pretty darn fast that he's not even messing. He will abandon you and reject you there and then on the spot. He will even ghost you. So this is how it's going down. If you're living like degenerates out there, I'm going to keep cutting you off. It's, it's as simple as that. I'm going to keep on cutting you off one by one until you learn a valuable life lesson. That you don't go around high-fiving one another only to then laugh and joke from everything that you inflict upon others because it will make its way back onto each and every one of you doing this dirty work and trust me it is going to crush and defeat every single one of you involved more than it is us because like I said we are the ones myself and anybody else out there we are the ones that are going to experience a huge come up and that is going to be your downfall you don't even realise it well, you will see enough, trust me, you will. Because you're just going to do what you do best. Result to rage, result to um, persecution and all of these things. But as long as it's bothering each and every one of you, for real, and it's blocking your own blessings, what could potentially be your own blessings, and it has no impact on me, then we're all good. Truly. Because like I said, and I'll say it for the last and final time, you clowns laugh and joke amongst yourselves now by doing evil, right? But yet ironically, it's you same dumbasses that come crawling back, crying, begging and pleading for this golden ticket. Oh, we need you. We need you more than ever. No. No. All bridges are burned. Which part of that don't you understand? You don't go around, like I said, treating others like shit. And then to come crawling back, crying, begging and pleading for that said same person. It's not going to happen. We're going to leave you to fend for yourselves. After all. It's what I did right. These past three, four, however many years. I have to fend for myself. Still do, to this day. Each and every one of you are going to fend for yourself. You're not going to cry for anybody else that you did wrong. Beg and plead. You're going to carry that weight as your punishment and you're going to use it in order to make you the men that you were designed and created to be according to the gospel word. So my advice would be to stop that stop living even like degenerates stop living like degenerates stop living a double minded life and then convincing yourselves that you're doing God's will and you're doing God's work and God's law and all of this, you're not doing anything of God another example of this would be Jesus Christ, are you guys familiar with him? he was God incarnate within the flesh right? Did you think that within his biblical days, within his 32 or 33 days, I think it was, of life, did you honestly think he was living a double-minded life? Did you see him high-fiving, you know, other people, smug-smirking, you know, with other people amongst themselves by living a double-minded life, doing evil and then doing good? That right there is causing a 
conviction of your own consciences. There's a difference, say, by getting wrath with the wicked, using the belt and buckle, along with bamboo stick if it's, you know, earned pretty much. There's a big difference between controlled wrath, controlled anger, right? From those that genuinely can't control it. Worldly anger, rage. Big difference. And I'm referring to the men here. It's us men that are known to actually in fact get wrath and I would recommend the guys out there to start carrying a belt and buckle along with bamboo stick in order to protect you uh, protect yourself it is what it is mate but those of you like I said that are trying to latch onto my coattails you probably don't like that again and I so happen to see you in public you're gonna get your asses beat trust me and you're going to think twice, not to latch on to my coattails and disrespect my boundaries like that. I can spiritually discern, like I said, my own children from the gospel, from those that are living a double-minded, degenerative life. If you're living a life of evil, committing sin, doing this, doing that, doing the other, laughing and joking amongst yourselves, high-fiving one another, yeah? That does not make you my child. I abandon you. I reject you. It is what it is. Those, however, that are living according to the gospel word, dying to their worldly programmed self in order to find life again, the real true meaning of life. These are my children. Because they choose, like I said, not to sin every single day of the week. Now they may mess up every once in a while, sure. But I would know instantly who were my children and who were not. Because those that mess up They're strong enough to bring it to light. They're strong enough to actually, in fact, confess when they royally screwed up. And that's, technically speaking, their way of repenting. Getting right with God. Reconciling their relationships. See, I can tell the real ones apart from those of you that haven't even lived up a hard day's labour within your entire life. To you clowns out there, it's all fun and games, right? It's all about laughter, it's all about joking, it's all about living like a child, a man-child or a woman-child. It's all about this, it's all about that. Well, that's the path you chose, right? That's not the path I chose. Therefore, I'm burning all bridges off. Because, my, you know, my children, my, my children, according to the gospel, would actually love and respect their father. They would love and respect their father. They wouldn't trample his boundaries. They wouldn't high-five one another and smug smirk amongst themselves for doing what they do. Not in this shit. So I'm thankful for these dreams in a way, like I said, because God's beginning to re reveal to me now who exactly, who the real ones are, and who the wolves in sheep's clothing are, pretending to either be followers, saints, disciples, or any other known figure. to the big man upstairs himself. He's beginning to reveal who were snakes and who were genuinely real. 
and when I get a mental list of faces in here on who to cut off one by one, you best believe I'm going to burn all bridges down and you have done it for yourselves you have gone and done it because there's no getting back like I said what you could potentially have had with me it's over it will always be over I win each and every one of you living like degenerates living a double minded life lose it's a fact